Hey there, Blast Tube. It's your girl Lori, also known as Sharky Stitcher on this channel and on Instagram. We talk about cross stitching on this channel, the obsession, the hobby, the therapy, whatever you want to call it, it all works the same. But, anyways, thanks so much for joining me tonight. Got a fair bit to talk about tonight, but I'm going to try and condense it because I'm having memory issues on my phone as per usual. <laughs> I need to get a new one. But um, it's a few little life updates. I'm going to make it quick again. Just had the total solar eclipse in North America. That was amazing. I was fortunate enough to live in the path of totality. So I didn't really have to go anywhere. <laughs> didn't have to get stuck in traffic. And then the weather graced us. It was partially cloudy, but it was not cloudy enough to not see anything. So, but it, oh my God, it was so amazing. So totally recommend like if you're, I used to think we'd hear about people that were driving to where the path of totality was. And we're always like, why would you do that? It only lasts three minutes, whatever. But there is such a big difference between like a partial solar eclipse and seeing totality, being able to look at it without the glasses on. Oh my God, it's just mind blowing. So glad I got to experience it. And my kid thought it was really cool too. So that happened. Um, before that, I got a new tattoo. <laughs> Let me show it to you real quick because I'm sure you guys will probably see it and be like, what the heck is that? But it's a gator skull, some crystals, and some gardenia flowers. So, yeah, I went to Pennsylvania to get that. And, yeah, I love it. I thought it was going to hurt more in this spot, but it wasn't too bad. Probably the triceps, like, tricep bothered me on this side, too. But, yeah, the, the armpit wasn't too bad. Like, usually I hear that that hurts. I also like how, like, I've got a little flower peeking out of my arm. So, it's cool. But, yeah, got that. Um, <laughs> Still pole dancing. That's been a thing, doing that a lot. Um, working on choreography right now. And I was planning on competing sometime this year, but I'm having so much fun learning new things that I'm kind of annoyed that I'm working on this choreography because it gives me less time to like learn new tricks. So I'm kind of shelving competing right now just because I, I want to have fun. This is I'm doing this to have fun. That's the whole object to it. And I find myself getting mad that it's like, I want to try this new trick that I saw, but I had to work in the clearing out your feet. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying it. And that's the whole point. And it's, you know, helping me stay in shape, fun stuff like that. And there's a lot of good friends that I have, you know, from that. So that's been really cool. And it's like an artistic outlet kind of thing. So it's another form of therapy. It's just like stitching is. Stitching and pole dancing. That's my thing. <laughs> so, okay. Stitching. We'll move to that. Um... It is Chatelaine season, so I'm super excited about that. And what I mean by Chatelaine season is the sale at European Cross Stitch is going on right now. European Cross Stitch is a store that sells the kits for the Chatelaine designs, um, which if you're not familiar with them, welcome to my channel. We talk about them a lot. <laughs> and um, there's so many designs and I want them all. <laughs> and last year I actually didn't indulge in the sale just because I was like, you have so many but um, this year there was a couple that I really am dying to start. So I had to partake of the sale. What did I order? I know I ordered the thread pack for the Arabian Walled Garden, which I don't have a picture handy. I did show it in my last video, but my stitching space is kind of a mess right now because I just got done doing my taxes and I was pulling a bunch of stuff out for, you'll find out some other news I'm going to talk about. <laughs> but um, so I don't have the picture to show you, but I showed it last time. Um, it's like a, a scene of like a garden in a desert. It's really cool and I'm really dying to start that one, but there's a lot of Gloriana's in there. So um, if you're not familiar with the Chatelaine sale and websites, um, the sale's probably going to be over by the time you see this because I think it's the, it's the 11th or 12th. It's close to midnight <laughs> like usual when I film. Um, so the sale's done at the 15th. Uh, when you go, you don't have to enter a code or anything. When you add things to your cart, the sale price, which is 10% off, is automatically applied. So they usually have the sale in April, and there's usually one in November as well. So if you miss the April one, if you're watching this in July or something, usually there's one in November too. Um, I thought I'd just give you an example of the kits you get. So this is like a full kit. Full kit means I bought the all the available threads and the beads. So you can buy things a la carte for the most part. So like the bead pack, you would just get this. I do this a lot. I love to order the bead packs because it's cheaper to just buy the bead pack. And I like to buy the bead pack because of all the drama that went on with Swarovski's a few years back to where, you know, I wanted to make sure I got the things I needed while they were still available. 
So I've bought Boku bead kits. That and I love beads. <laughs> and sometimes just buying the bead pack, like I think I bought this bead pack and the colors of the beads is what got me really excited to get the threads. Cause this piece, this is um, Fairy Flower Garden. It has a very prominent purple center and there's lots of fun purple threads in here. So seeing the bead pack motivated me to get the thread pack as well. And I try to like, since it's a sale, you know, it's in our female DNA to partake of a sale. <laughs> I, um, I like to buy at least one thing, you know, like that's on my list. Um, I've probably, um, reached Sable with Chatelaine design kits, which is stash acquisition beyond life expectancy. <laughs> so yeah, I probably can stitch them until I die, even if I don't buy anything else. But, um, especially with the kind of how slow I've been stitching lately. But I actually got a lot done in the last month. I shouldn't say that. But let me just show you <laughs> a sneak peek of my, these are bead pack only drawers. So I know I have a problem, but I love it. Let's see here. Let's, where's a big fat one? Hummingbird lace has a lot. Yeah, I think I've heard someone say hummingbird lace has the most beads of any Chatelaine. So, you know, I had to get in on that action. But, yep, so much fun. This one's heavy, too. And I do have the chart for this one. I don't have the threads, so I don't know what fabric I'm going to do. I'm thinking maybe like a pearl gray or maybe a darker kind of slate gray. I'm not sure. I don't like neutrals if you haven't met me yet. <laughs> I like some kind of color, you know, for my shadow lanes, for everything, really. There's some designs I like neutrals, but not many. But, yeah. Sometimes I just like to pick through here. And if I'm in a stitching rut, a lot of times when I go through my sparkle hoard, that kind of helps spark my stitchy bug back to life. Defibrillate it, if you will. Okay, so yes, European cross-stitch sales going on right now. So get, your, get yourself some of those. Um, I've been on a big Chatelaine kick. Um, I've been working on the beaded hummingbird tile, which that's another thing I ordered. Um, I'm loving working on this tile so much and I am itching that I've got like four, four, three or four others like ready to go. Fabric got everything ready like they just need to be started. And I was thinking about starting another one before I finish this first one because it's, let me just show it to you real quick. This is my whip of the beaded hummingbird tile. Just to give you a visual aid as to what I'm talking about. So here it is. This is the beaded hummingbird tile. And the thing about these beaded tiles is they are a smaller size mandala, but they are extremely heavy on the beads. So you can see this middle portion is beaded. Each of the hummingbirds are beads. There's a bunch of beads right around here. That's about as far as I've gotten with the beads. I kind of bead as I go, but I like to do the stitching first. That way I'm not snagging beads as I'm stitching. There is about maybe a centimeter or two more border around here. But then that's how big this piece is. So it's a small chatelaine, but small chatelaines are still a lot of work. Because what's funny about chatelaines is a lot of times they're very confetti heavy. Like there's like a million different colors where there kind of doesn't need to be. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's confetti heavy. So you're doing a lot of stitching. Then you got to go over like the same area with specialty stitches. Then you got to go over it with beads. And then a lot of times you have to back stitch it with metallics or something. So it's a lot of work, but they are so worth it. And I love the small um, attainable, like I could finish this, you know, and like, I mean, realistically, like a couple weeks, you know, if I really push to it, you know, so it's, if you want to finish, you know, it's a good, you know, thing to pull out for that. And they're just so fun. So I'm really loving these beaded tiles. So I ended up ordering a couple more beaded tiles. I, be, I got the full kit for the beaded scarab tile so it's kind of like an egyptian theme which i'm really into egyptian things and i had always wanted that one um i ordered the beads for the rose tile i may have got the threads too because i'm thinking the thread pack was maybe on the cheap side for shadowing like maybe 30 bucks or something which the beaded tiles are so much smaller that they are like a cheaper investment and these i would say <laughs> If you're just getting into Chatelaine's and you want to start with something small, these are good unless you aren't into beads because they are bead heavy, you know. So you could, in theory, swap out the beads and just put, you know, some colored threads in there, but then that's extra work too. <laughs> so 
and they are cheaper, you know, when it comes to kit wise. So, because they're smaller. But yeah, I'm really enjoying that. So I think I got, let's see, the Scarab, the Rose, which the Rose, like that one, <laughs> I struggle with this. It's very pink and girly. <laughs> and that's not always my jam, but there was once upon a time when your girl Lori was very much into pink and girly things. And then life jaded me. <laughs> um, but she's still in there somewhere sometimes. And the rose tile, I don't know, it's just so pretty. Whenever I see pictures of it, there's a ton of Jessica's in it. And those are really fun. I love Jessica stitches. So I just finally decided, screw it, just go ahead and get it. And then um, the Marie Antoinette tile too, also pretty girly. And, but again, seeing the pictures of it, I'm like, oh my God, it's amazing. I think I just got the bead pack for that one though. I don't think I got the threads just yet. There are a couple of the beaded tiles I'm not into which one is the swan just because and maybe again i've not really seen very many stitch pictures of it uh mostly it's the digital pictures which aren't always the greatest and but it's very the colors aren't very vibrant obviously it's swan so it's like a lot of white you know and then it's not really a mandala it's more like a mirror image of swans so i don't know like the design like the reason i started this hummingbird one first well a couple reasons first i really loved the the mandala look on this one like i just thought that was pretty also i really freaking love these over one hummingbirds up here which these guys got a million different colors in them so i basically the way i decided to attack them because one of, one of my favorite things about stitching is planning my hey you know plan of attack basically and i decided okay since they have a million colors in them i'm going to stitch them in pairs that way it'd be a pain in the butt to do them one at a time also a lot of times when i'm stitching a mandala i start by completing but once the layers get bigger that becomes a lot more challenging like for me to stitch all of the hummingbirds there's two on each side obviously um i would get real sick of them so i decided let's do them in pairs and usually I will start in the center, work my way around until things start getting big and I start getting bored. Then I usually work my way up. And that's one way I keep track of where my up is on Chatelaine. If you're using Q-snaps, you have to be careful about, you know, starting your work upside down or something and making your stitches go the wrong way. It's not such a big deal on scroll frames, you know, because there's only two options. But, um... Some people will stitch a little arrow for their up. I used to like tie a ribbon on my scroll frame to mark my up, but now I just stitch my up. <laughs> so my up is where I'm working. <laughs> so that's how I usually like to do that. And then there's one other, I think it's the butterfly one that just doesn't really do much for me. It's not very different from the hummingbird one either. And I prefer hummingbirds to butterflies. So, okay, what's next? I do have some more Chatelaine stuff to show you, but that kind of goes with like stuff that I'm kidding up. So let me go over some of the more news that I have, and that is about Krennic Metallics. So um, if you're part of the Facebook group, they do have one. Doug Krennic announced that he is retiring, and the company Krennic Metallics has been sold to Rainbow Gallery, which Rainbow Gallery does the petite treasure braids. A lot of people prefer petite treasure braids, at least that I've seen. Um, they find them more workable. Me personally, I kind of prefer the Krennic Metallics because this is usually interchangeable. This um, petite treasure braid is interchangeable with number four um, Metallics, but it's not as thick. So that means the coverage isn't as much. But I think that's why a lot of people prefer this because a lot of people hate stitching with Metallics because it feels like stitching with barbed wire. I don't mind it so much because of the effect. Um, number eight Krennic Metallics are a little bit much, I do think, but the number four is like, I iron my metal, all of my threads, basically, even my beading thread. And I find that that helps me take the kinks out. So, but the announcement was that Krennic Metallics has been bought by Rainbow Gallery. So they are basically shipping all the machines out to Rainbow Gallery in California. I can't remember where Krennic Metallics factory was, I think somewhere in the Midwest, but I'm not certain on that. So they said they're still going to be producing them and another company is just taking them over. That's basically all we've been told, but of course speculations have run amok. So some people are saying the price is going to go up because now it's in California and everything's more expensive in California. 
I don't know, maybe, maybe not, but some people are also like, well, when you look at it by the yard, the treasure braids cost less. Well, I also would say that they probably take less work to do because there's less, they're less dense. So I don't know. But my thoughts though are, I would not be surprised if certain colors go out of print or, you know, get discontinued for the most part, if they're not very popular. So me being me and wanting to be prepared, I also was just getting ready to make an order for some of the Chatelaine things that I'm going to show you here in a little bit um, for some dinky dye silk. And of course, I'm not just going to make an order for a single thing of silk. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to maybe go on a little metallic shopping spree because one thing they did say is they may run into supply issues because right now they have stopped manufacturing chronic metallics while they pack everything up and move and it may take them a little while to get things up and running again so they said don't be surprised if things start selling out and then they will be you know replenished later but I didn't want to wait on that so <laughs> I went through my mirabilias that I have like Ooh, I want to get the threads for them because I, I tend to do that when I'm kidding things up. I just, I start buying the metallics, then I start buying the beads, then I start thinking about fabric, and then I start, you know, I, I, I like to buy them gradually. Unless something's really burning me that I want to start it, then I'll just like buy everything for it. Um, also, there's a few colors that I have in my stash of metallics, uh, chronic metallics, that are kind of like an odd color. Like one in particular is this one. This is a glorious purple and I love this color. Look at it. And it is 5013, number four is what this is. So I ordered a couple extra spools of this just in case they discontinue this color. And this is kind of a very specific color. Like I, I don't know that I would be able to match a treasure braid to it. I have bought a lot of the purple treasure braids and I will say I haven't seen any that matches this exactly. So I just wanted to make sure I had my favorites on hand, just in case, just in case. I'm not saying they're gonna get discontinued. I'm not saying this color is getting discontinued. I'm not saying that at all. This is just me being paranoid and prepared and it makes me feel better about life. So <laughs> just leave me alone. <laughs> but then I ordered um, the metallics for Shimmering Mermaid because I've really been feeling her lately. Like she's actually really cool. She's out of print too. Got her on eBay before she got too expensive. Uh, Bluebeard's Prisoners. She has a lot of like extra stuff. She's got four water lilies. She's got four metallics. She's got a slew of beads on here. And that always entices me into stitching a design. Lilith the Labrador. I keep meaning to start her just because she's weird looking. Like she's kind of got this zombie looking skin, which I dig. I just don't know what color I want to stitch her on. But I thought let's get her metallics and get her sorted. So put in an order for that just to make myself feel better about the whole chronic situation. And if I hear anything more, I of course will update you on my next video, but you can also go onto their um, Facebook group if you want to stay updated from the horse's mouth, you know? Okay. Let's go into, um, stash, you know, stash that I've gotten. Couldn't think of the word for some reason. My brain was buffering. Okay, so I got this from Under the Sea Fabrics. Let me pull everything out. This is one of the newer Vela Filipinas. And I don't know what this series is called, but basically, without breaking copyright, it's like Disney princesses, which I'm not too into. They have, I think, Snow White, Alice in Wonderland. I don't know if there's another one. But now we have the Magic Lamp. Ooh! I always prefer the Eastern type princesses or whatever, but look at her colors. Isn't that gorgeous? Love her. I got her with the recommended fabric, which this is Red Sky at Night. Red Skies at Night by Under the Sea Fabric. And it basically looks just like the picture, so I'm cool with that. Looks like it's going to be a fairly small-ish design. Um, let's see, what else did I get? I got the metallics, which are treasure braids. Again, from Under the Sea Fabrics. If you're on the Facebook group for Under the Sea Fabrics, um, she'll post, hey, putting in orders for the new Bella Filipina. And you can just comment on that if you want the chart, the beads, the fabric, the floss, like you can list what you want. 
I listed all because I like her enough. And I thought, you know, it's nice to have one of the princesses, you know, kind of a different series. I do so many mermaids too. So sometimes it's fun to do a not mermaid, but I love her. The former belly dancer in me loves her too. So there's that. Don't know when I'm going to start her. I'm not going to round up her thread just yet because as you can see, I got quite a pile accumulated here and there's other, other things that are pressing me to get started. All right. Some other things that I ordered are I'm trying to do more small chatelaines because I'm liking how much progress I'm getting on this hummingbird tile here because at the end of the day I really have not finished that many chatelaines other than Taj Mahal and like I can't remember the name of it that autumn bell pole which was a smaller ish chatelaine anyways but the only big one I've really done is Taj Mahal okay I'm going to show you the chart from far away you're not going to be able to make anything of it but you know, if you know chatelaine you probably are familiar they have a lot of these fruits and the fruits are like completely decked out in specialty stitches. I can't remember how many fruits there are. I want to say four. And I chose the pineapple just because out of all of the fruits, that fruit has the most texture anyway. So I thought the speciality stitches would be especially cool on that one. So I got, let me show you the fabric. I chose it. I got it out of stash. You're going to laugh. You're going to be like, really, Lori, that one? It's a non-metallic neutral. <laughs> but... I liked how when I dug through my stash, I wasn't really sure what I was feeling for this design. And I thought, well, this one looks cool with the floss because there's lots of like oranges and greens and yellows. And I was liking how it was looking on there. So I ordered that. Um, and then I got a hold of some treasure braid and some silk lame braid. So there's that stuff for a zip. Pineapple, which is my fun way of saying pineapple. And threads. Okay. So I ordered these threads. I may have shown this to you guys last video too. But look at that. There's a Gloriana. Oh! <laughs> it was in stock, so I ordered it. And then there was one that I was missing. I think it was a dinky dye. And when I looked at it, Dinky dyes frustrates me a little bit because it's the variances and the colors are very subtle. Like when you look at the thread, like, let me show you this here. You can see there's some variation in color. When I actually start stitching it, it's even more subtle than that. And the called for of this was even lighter blue than this. This is one of my leftovers from Taj Mahal. So I thought instead of buying a whole skein of an even more washed out blue, I will just reuse this one from Taj Mahal. So Look at me being frugal <laughs> and using my leftovers, which is a good thing. I have a tendency to buy like brand new for all because I tend to stitch big designs and I tend to need, you know, maybe not a whole skein, but I'm, you know, if I were to use a already utilized skein, I might run out and no one wants that to happen. So that's the pineapple. How big is that? Let me see. That stitch size is 4.25 by 4.25, so under 5 inches. So that's a small one. So yeah, small chatelaine that I want to stitch. And then also the ginger spice tile. Give you guys kind of a looky-loo at that. So it's basically just a little tile with a plant in it that's ginger. Um, This one had a lot of colors in it, actually. And... Oh my God, try not to dump everything on the floor. Oh, I pulled some beads for this too. Oh, and some of my crystals for this one. Cause these require beads and crystals, which that's another thing I need to go bead shopping, but beads are kind of frustrating for me to shop for because I can never find one shop that has all the colors I need. Sorting through these flosses. There's a lot of, for such a small design, there's a lot of colors in this, which some of them like, not this one, but the next one I'm going to show you, I think. Do I have a handy? Yes, I do. Okay. The next one I'm going to show you, it will blow your mind a little bit, like the floss list for such a small design. And a lot of them are silks. So that's not a cheap floss list. So doing some organizing. I think I showed you guys some of these last time, but I'm not sure. Stardust. So this is the same thing that I'm stitching the um, hummingbird tile on, by the way. If I didn't mention the fabric, it's Stardust by Fabrics by Stephanie. Here's all these colors. 
a lot of colors. And then I also have, I pulled these out of stash. I only had three in my stash of the called for colors. It's kind of what some of the beads look like, which I had those in stash, thankfully, but I'm still missing a fair few. Um, some silks, water lilies, and another Gloriana, Florimel, which Florimel, it seems like it's kind of like a pearl cotton, like it's twisted, which this actually is what was called for on the pineapple, but I ordered just the one because I figured I can use it for both, but then the other one had, was the same color, but it's a regular silk, so I thought, well, it's in stock and it's a Gloriana, so I'm just going to buy it, <laughs> and it's pretty, so... A lot of times too with chatelaines she tends to use the same type colors so i figure for a lot of these smaller designs that i'm wanting to stitch it'd be good to have these on hand because then i can share with the smaller ones i do really love this um silk lame right here it's real pretty get kind of the silk and metallic at the same time which is fun okay so here's another one this is the medieval fruit star number one sorbus so that's kind of an idea of what that looks like. Very small design, but oh my God, look at, look how many Glorianas this one needs for this itty bitty thing. Like it's like, we're talking ornament size here. Stitch count is 96 by 96. And this is the supply list. <laughs> yeah, Shadowlands are a little extra, but so am I. So that's one reason why they appeal to me. So I'm thinking what I'm gonna do with this one, instead of buying all the stuff for it, I think I'm just going to stitch a bunch of Chatelaines and dig through my leftovers for this one. That's probably what I'm gonna do because I'm not buying a whole thing just for this itty bitty little thing, no way. Alrighty, so let's look at my whips. I already showed you my hummingbird tile. Let's move to Cleopatra which last video I was super excited because I got all these fabrics and she's the first one I decided to start because I was feeling it the most. I got a lot done on her. So here's Cleopatra. <laughs> oh, and you guys cannot see it. Like first off, this lighting is making my blue look less vibrant, which is kind of annoying, but especially with all the drama I had to go through to get this, this color. I'm trying to move her close because she's so sparkly. Like, oh, and she's missing her skin because she's getting over one skin and I am doing a conversion and I'm not sure it's going to work yet. <laughs> so I've decided I wanted to stitch all of these surrounding areas to the skin. That way I can start comparing for it because some of these colors in this chair, my conversion, I think one of the colors of the skin is already in the chair. <laughs> so I want to make sure it doesn't make her blend in with her chair. God, that and I'm so stressed out by converting skin because I don't want to do it wrong. <laughs> like I don't want it to look unnatural, you know, but I do want her skin to be darker than it is. So, but I'm really enjoying her. She's a lot of fun. She goes pretty quick though, because she's like, you know, an, an Egyptian design and Egyptian like architecture is very symmetric and geometric almost. So there's a lot of solid color stitching in big chunks. So that's kind of fun. And then the next whip, I'm not taking it off the bars. You can see I barely even got 100 stitches done on it. But this is Urduja. She's who I'm working on right now on the bars. I kind of go back and forth between sitting over here and stitching in my designated stitching area or stitching over here and having this, you know, in my lap, basically, which has been fun flip-flopping between the two. So when I'm in the mood for mermaid, I'm facing this way. And when I'm in the mood for beads and chatelaines, I'm facing this way. But here's her duja. And you can see I've got this little bit of orange right here. And that is this bit of her tail right here. Now, one thing I did order in my um, order from 123 Stitch with Alders Metallics, when I ordered this, I got the kit from uh, Under the Sea Fabrics, and they have the treasure braids. The This design comes with recommending recommending the Krennix, but then it also has a conversion list for the um, treasure braids. But when I looked at the treasure braid for one color, it looks a little like too orange. <laughs> so I went ahead and ordered the called for Krennic metallic to see if I like it better because looking at it on the screen, it looks like it's a more interesting color. So we shall see, but that is another metallic that I have ordered in there. <laughs> So, 
But yeah, there's my whip. So I feel like I got a fair bit done. Like, because I didn't have anything done in Cleopatra when I talked to you guys last. I don't think that's Ada, by the way. Ada, come here. Come say hi. She's my baby girl. Oh, it's a good baby. Here's a baby girl, yes. Look at her. Isn't she sweet? You guys don't get to see her very often. She's my baby, though. Mm. How old are you now? You're 11? I think she's 11. Yeah. She's got her gray chin. Yes, you do, baby. I think she's ready to go to BED. So. But basically, that's it. So, um, yeah. Yay. I didn't run out of memory. Um, again, I'm going to try and film monthly. So I will probably see you guys sometime in May. Hopefully, maybe I will get that hummingbird tile finished. That would be nice. And then I can start the dragonfly tile. So that would be cool. Um, so yeah, get your Chatelaine sale stuff. Um, if you're paranoid like me, feel free to stock up on your favorite Krennics, just in case it takes a while for you to be able to get your hands on any of them. Um, or if they discontinue some. But again, that's not for sure. That's just me being paranoid. So I don't want to make my issues your issues. But anyways, thanks so much for spending time with me, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!